What's up guys, Reggie Harvey here. I am a athlete with Titan Medical Center. I came to Titan uh, because I was having a lot of issues on sleeping. Uh, my sex drive was super low. My energy was low. When I was in the gym, the weights felt heavy. Every, everything was off for normal for me. And I'm a personal trainer, that's what I do for a living. Uh, I'm an IFBB pro, I compete. Uh, and my everyday life was just off. So I needed a little help. Talked to a few of the people at Titan, a few other athletes, and they pushed me over to go get my blood work done. I pretty much had a lot of issues before Titan, and uh, I came just so they can fix those issues. Uh, I did go ahead and get my blood work done. And what the blood work showed was that my estrogen level was high, um, my testosterone level was dramatically low, lower than a female's testosterone level. Uh, it was, I think, 46. It was, it was rough. So at the end of the day, these are things that I needed to fix for my everyday life. And I'm talking away from the gym not even talking about the gym. I came here, me and my girlfriend planned to get pregnant. That was not happening with the testosterone level that I was at. Went to the doctor here at Titan Medical. Uh, blood work came back, talked it over with the doctor. He prescribed me HCG, testosterone, to get my test back up, and a little uh, Hercules potion. You know, I wanted to feel good. I wanted to get a little pump in the gym and really get back into it. Um, long story short, now my girlfriend is pregnant. <laughs> We're having a kid on the way. Um, I feel great. I feel energized. And I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't come to Titan Medical. As far as my experience here, the doctor was very knowledgeable. I was a little nervous coming in. I didn't want to come in here and be judged for my test being low for what I've taken in the past. Um, I, the doctor came in, he was very patient with me. He understood everything I told him and gave me great feedback of what I needed to do to get back into a nice, healthy lifestyle, get my back, body back in shape. And uh, the girls on the phone were really easy to work with. I. I was, a, believe it or not, <laughs> I was a little nervous to even call, so I texted them. They texted me right back within about 20 minutes. It was a very simple process. Got in here, got it done quick, um, and I, I'm a happy guy now. We're, we're doing big things. My energy is high. My sex drive is high. Uh, I'm back in the gym. I'm gaining good weight. Uh, my body fat is lower, and I'm having a baby. <laughs> so, uh, I just want to say, Titan Medical changed my life, and I'm not being cliche, I'm not uh, just blowing smoke at you guys. It really did was a huge factor in me getting back into a healthy lifestyle, so. What's up guys, John here, and I'm with my good friend and former ex-professional NFL player, Sean King. So today, Sean came in, he's already had his blood work, he's had his consultation with the medical provider, now's the fun part. He got his regimen in the mail, and we're gonna go through a full tutorial of all his medications, so he understands what these medications are, how to utilize these medications, and what the game plan is going forth. So we're gonna document all of his journey for you guys, so you guys can see it first up close and personal look at this stuff and uh, see what he's going through and what he has to do you know for his regiment and uh, the first thing you know I told Sean was I said don't worry when you get this package <laughs> you're gonna be overwhelmed like you can see the stuff come in right yeah, it's a lot crazy. <laughs> yeah. so you know for somebody that hasn't done something like this obviously you know they're gonna be like oh my god what did I get myself into right, <laughs> right? what is all this stuff now fortunately for Sean he's in the area mm -hmm. you know he can come in you know and if you're a patient in the area you guys can come in and we'll give you a full tutorial now, if you guys aren't, you guys can always go look at our YouTube page, Titan Medical Center. We have all the instructions on how to do these injectables, how to mix the injectables, what they are and such. So you guys can go there for educational purposes or to research you know, your regimen. If you have any questions, obviously call and text us here. We're always here for your support, uh, especially for Sean. He's got my personal number so he can get a hold of me anytime. All right, so we're gonna unbox 
these medications. All right, and we're just gonna dump it off like this. It's a lot, you know. All right, so we're good. Oh, God, it just keeps coming, guys. It keeps coming. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. It, it literally is Christmas. So let's start pulling some of these bad boys out of the box and seeing exactly what Sean has and uh, what he's gonna do and how he's gonna do it. All right, so let's line these bad boys up. All right, so the first thing we're just gonna address here real quick is you see these big packages. So you got two packages here, and they're pretty big, right? And these are all needles, all syringes and needles. So the first one you got is you've got your 30 gauge, half inch, one ml insulin syringes. Now these are gonna be used with Hercules Potion, ACG, everything that's water-based, right? These are your big testosterone needles. You know, these are a lot bigger than the average insulin needle, obviously. You're talking about a 23 gauge, one inch, it's a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. You're only gonna utilize these with just testosterone. So that's the only thing you gotta worry about with these because we need to go make sure it goes deep enough. And because of the viscosity of the oil and the testosterone, it's gonna be able to push the syringe a lot easier. If we were to use one of these, and you'll see what I'm talking about when you open it up, um, it's going to be a lot harder because the bevel of this syringe, it's real small, mm -hmm. it's a lot harder, so it's going to be a lot harder and slower to push that testosterone through there. That's why we don't utilize this. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Back to that, just want to make sure it's all clean. All right, so we've got the needles out of the way. You see the big pack of needles? We'll talk about which one goes with which so you understand it as well. Okay. And then you'll get this little kit right here. And if you have anything that needs to be mixed, diluted, and I'll show you which ones need to be and why, and you'll understand real simple afterwards. But you'll get this bacterial static water with a mixing syringe and a needle, okay? All right, so let's get into his therapies. Let's see what we got first. So we started Sean off on a good regimen. We don't want to overdo it because mm -hmm. right now you're seeing a lot of boxes and stuff like this. This could be overwhelming. That's what I told Sean. Okay. The first thing we're going to start off with is Sean's HRT. So we can talk about his testosterone replacement therapy and the other medications that are going to go with it. All right. So the first one. Your testosterone. Okay. Okay. So, Sean has his personalized regimen of how much he's going to take per week. These are his estrogen blockers. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's going to go right along with it. Okay. So, ATG. And you see how this is powdered? Mm -hmm. So, this is the you one that... dilute that. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. This is the one thing that we're going to have to dilute. And we're going to use this little kit right here that we send along with it okay. to dilute your medication. Now, with anything that gets diluted, before it gets diluted, it's fine. You can carry, carry it around with you anywhere and not have a problem. After you dilute this, this medication needs to go in the refrigerator. Okay. okay. All right, so let's talk about these medications and what they're gonna do for you and why you're taking them. So testosterone replacement therapy. So testosterone, we're gonna replace the testosterone in the body that was on the lower end or deficient, mm -hmm. right? We wanna raise those numbers up to the optimum level of the range, mm -hmm. okay? So that's why we're taking testosterone, right? The next thing is, is when we take testosterone, it's going to aromatize into other hormones. So one particular is estradiol or estrogen. Mm -hmm. At that point, we want to make sure the aromatization is lowered because if the aromatization goes too high and your estrogen goes too high, water retention, irritability, mm -hmm. sensitivity, and fat deposits, right. possible gonadotropin too afterwards. All right, so that's man boobs. Man boobs. That's right. Okay. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. And then the next thing is, is ACG. The reason we're taking ACG, the reason we're taking ACG is because when we're introducing testosterone from an outside source, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a cream, it's an injectable, it's a pellet, whatever it is, we want to make sure that your natural function does not get shut off completely or suppressed. Mm -hmm. And when you put an outside source of this testosterone in the body, what happens is, is those numbers or that, that function gets suppressed. There's a signal that goes from the brain to the testicles. And that signal says, hey, listen, we need your work. When it realizes that it's getting this outside source, 
it shuts off that signal to the testes and it says, listen, we don't need you to work anymore. We're already getting this from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So at that point, what will happen is, is if you keep taking testosterone without some gonadal support for the testes, you're going to get shrinkage, little semen production. It's going to get tight down there. It's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not optimal either. Um, the whole reason you're doing testosterone replacement is to get all the benefits without the negative side effects. Okay. Right? You want to make sure you're getting all the benefits and not having no issues or problems. If you're not taking an estrogen blocker and estrogen goes too high, you can start crying for frisky commercials. <laughs> I'm not joking. Like, you know, like you watch Titanic, you're getting all, all crazy. You're like, oh my God. Don't like, see. And this never, yeah. <laughs> Jacob, where is he with the please? And so, yeah, so we don't want that, okay? Um, plus irritability. So the, the myth with testosterone is you take testosterone, you become more aggressive, you get roid rage. The real problem with roid rage is because estrogen and other hormones are out of whack, and that's what causes that, mm -hmm. okay? So we want to make sure. So at that point, we're going to make sure you're all dialed in, estrogen blocker at your prescribed dose, and that could be different for everybody, okay? And that's why the medical provider went over what's good for you. There's not a cookie-cutter plan. Mm -hmm. There's some things that work for the masses of people out there, but not might not work for one person to the other. Right. It just all depends, okay? And that's why we blood test, and that's why we make sure you follow up. So if there's any issues once we start this. So once we start it uh, in week two, per se, if you're saying, well, listen, I'm getting sensitivity to the nipples, uh, I'm just not feeling right, or some things are off, that's when you or any other patient should call or text in. We talk to them, we evaluate things. If we need to send them in for just a blood test for just one thing or the other, we can do that and we can dial in the medication so it's right. Once we get that sweet spot, mm -hmm. once we know, listen, this is the dose of things you're gonna do. And it's smooth sailing. We know if you're consistent with the medication, the number should be there, everything's working like they should, everything's optimal, working on harmonic balance, and everything's gonna be great, okay? And then we can add on to those things. So testosterone replacement therapy is gonna be a game changer for you as far as that goes. I'm gonna wait till the end to dilute this mm -hmm. because this is gonna to need to be refrigerated, mm -hmm. okay? So I just wanna go over what that was and how we're gonna take this. So with testosterone, we're going to take this two times a week, all right? For your regimen, they prescribed Monday and Thursday, okay? Or you can change it up to Tuesday and Friday or Wednesday and Saturday just to see how those days in between, okay? okay? The reason why, okay? So it's easier to just take one shot, your full dose, and go on your week, mm -hmm. right? But what happens is, is when we take that one dose, it shoots up the testosterone to one level, and then it just starts going down, going down, going down, going down. So to the end of the week, you start feeling like, man, I don't, I don't, I feel like the old, like what's going on here? So when you, you divide the shots into two shots on the dose, it's gonna get you up, keep you up on that even keel, and you're gonna be consistent in the way how you feel and what's going on. Okay. So that's the reason we do that, okay? Estrogen blocker, I believe you're taking Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So just be consistent with that. And all the labels have the, uh... yep. Okay. So if you have any questions about any of your medication, Yes, they say it right on here. So it says like take one tablet by mouth every other day. Okay. Okay. And even with uh, your ACG, it's going to stay on here. And a lot of people don't read this. Like, well, I don't know what I should reconstitute this with, right? And they read on here. It says reconstitute vial with 6.5 mLs of bacterial static water and inject 20 units, 0.2 mLs, mm -hmm. subcutaneously. Okay. So that's a tutorial for your medications. Hormone replacement therapy, which is including your testosterone, aromatized inhibitor, and ACG, along with your injectable vitamin amino acids, Hercules Potion, and Titan Complete, and then your ECA Stack Plus. So you should be set for success. All right. You're ready to go. Ready to go. All right. All right. So we're going to get you rocking and rolling. I'll get you all set up here, and then we'll go over the tutorial with you and your wife to make sure that we have everything right. All right perfect. Okay? Appreciate it. My man. My man. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Chenille. I'm a nurse practitioner here at Titan Medical Center. Just wanted to kind of touch base with you today and let you know why female hormones are so important to be evaluated and monitored, especially if you're experiencing symptoms that you may not really understand or um, see how it can be affected by hormones in the body. So hormones do play a very important role in the way that you're feeling and they do all kind of work together um, in conjunction to help regulate and balance each other within the body. So many times patients just feel really tired, weighed down, bloated, fatigued, have low sex drive or libido, 
and they just kind of think maybe it's stress related or something going on. And oftentimes, sure, it could be, but other times it's not. And you don't always know that unless you get your hormones evaluated to see what's really going on within the body. Certainly other medical conditions can also play a role in regulation and balance of these hormones, um, which you may not even be aware is taking place in the body. Um, so the best thing that you can do is to check your hormones, let us know how you're feeling, and see how we can help. What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Awesome, good information that you guys can utilize. Honestly, whatever doesn't break you will make you stronger. That is the truth. Every week, if you don't know, we come up with these tips and tricks to help you guys enhance your relationships. I hope they all see this episode. Whether it's reigniting that passion or just developing a better, stronger relationship. We went through a lot of these trials and tribulations, so we wanted to give you guys the shortcut. I mean, you guys might even do this and not realize it, and your partner might be currently upset at you, so we might help you in that aspect. This is true. So, <laughs> What's up guys, John here. I'm Shree. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week we come at you guys, giving you guys great tips, tricks, or some just some good advice to help you guys' relationship go to the next level, reignite some of those different flames, or just make things better, because we just want to be better, right? Everybody should want to be better, especially in their current relationship or their future relationship, because the past really doesn't count. All you want to do is, is learn from your past. Yeah, learn so you don't make those same mistakes in the future, right? <laughs> That's what it's all about. Um, but you know, this week, you know, I think it's important, you know, to t cover this particular topic, which is making sure you don't make your partner feel insignificant and making sure that they feel appreciated and uh, you know, the same way that you treated them in the beginning, okay? And I, I think you know, a lot of the, the time people become complacent and they don't follow through with what they used to do. And you know, the, the partner might feel that in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about it in the past, like, you know, Sharice, like she used to like, and she still does. She writes me like little notes and she'll like leave them places, okay? <laughs> um, you know, so random. <laughs> it's just certain things like that, right? The little, little details of little, little things like text messages and stuff like that just still get and I love yeah you know and I try to send them back and stuff like that you know obviously she's you know a little bit more romantic than, than me but I, I try to be you know in my own light too as well you know he's romantic in his own way yeah you know you just, I want to make sure that you know she feels appreciated um you know that I'm there for her, and at that point like you know I you know, I see everything else is, that's going on and then I still love her just as much or more definitely more than in the beginning you know, and uh, I hear from a lot of people out there and, you know, they say, you know, I'm having this problem, you know, in my relationship where, you know, it started like this and it might have been like, you know, little notes or, you know, just certain things that their partner would mm -hmm. say to them. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, like now it's not happening, you know, it just it has the love weared off, you know, which changed comfortability, just comfortability, complacency, like, yeah. you know, these are all different things that happen to a lot of relationships out there. Um, because I think that, you know, every day, obviously, the more you're with somebody, you, know, you should love them more and you're learning more about them. So it should bring you guys closer. But, you know, it kind of wears off to a certain extent, I, I think, with some of these couples out there. And, you know, they were like that goo goo gaga in the honeymoon stage. And then after that, after so much time, it, it kind of wears off. Like, you know, this is, it's not a new thing. Like this, not, you know, it becomes like, routine. Yeah. It's like a routine. It right? is just like, you know, get up, brush your teeth, take a shower, go to work, come yeah. home, eat dinner, go to sleep, yeah. get up, brush your teeth, yeah. take a shower, go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Literally it's that, that's just over and over and over. Except instead of like me telling you those, those particular things, yeah. you're, doing it in your relationship right you just don't realize you're doing it right you know and you know at, you know it, like during a relationship like usually couples like they find their boundaries of you know what they do and what they do for each other or you know chores or things around the house or things like that and they mm -hmm. kind of get in, into that routine too and like all right this is what we do and like it's not even talked about at that point like just certain things right just do it um but you know at that point like if you're not recognizing your partner, like, thank you, I appreciate it, you know, what you're doing and saying these different things, they kind of feel like they're getting taken for granted, you know, or some things that they don't appreciate what you're doing for them. 
um, mm-hmm. just the way you feel all the way around. Even a little thank you does go like a long way. Yeah. You know, I like using examples, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to, this is a recent example. I don't know if you saw my Facebook story yet. I didn't see the Facebook oh. story yet. So anyways, I, I woke up this morning, right? And I'm, you know, I told you guys, I wake up. Good. The first thing I do, probably within the first three minutes of me waking up, I took a picture too, so I'll share it with you guys one day. But maybe I'll put it on here. I'll give it to Art. Oh no! I'll give it to you guys. I'm gonna. Sh- I'll show it to you guys what I look like. Now, don't judge me. But um, I'm in bed, you know, like trying to get all the emails out. I have a jug of water next to me, and that's it. So, anyways, um, this morning, you know, he came in and he gave me a, a ham and cheese croissant. Like he made me a ham and cheese croissant. And so I had put it on my Facebook, and you'll see it later. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it does say, like, you know, it was like, why is this ham and cheese croissant the best croissant I've ever had? And then at the bottom it says, because my husband made it for me. Because oh. he brought it to me, and he brought it to me in bed, and it was all, like, crispy, and it was just so yummy. But it tastes extra yummy because he made it for me. Like, I didn't ask him to make it for me. He just made me one because he thought I might be hungry, and he knows I like ham and cheese croissants, so... You know, we're going on a little binge with these croissants right now. But, you know, (laughs) me and John do binges. But, you know, he knew I wanted, like, one of them. And I just, you know, I put it on my story, and he would have eventually saw it. Now I blew blew the surprise. But, you know, it's just me saying thank you. You know, like, I really appreciated that. I thought that was so sweet, you know. And him doing it was sweet. You know, so it's little things like that makes the whole world a difference. It does. It really does. It does. It totally made my day. And he, like I said, it don't take a lot of money or anything like that. Yeah. You can make him something to eat, you write him a note, and that takes no money whatsoever. That just takes a little bit of effort on your part, mm-hmm. you know, and, and you know, you're going to surprise them. I mean, it could make them smile. It can make their day for the day. You know, it might make them appreciate you even more, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you want to do these different things. You know, I think that the problem is, is that people, they just get so into these routines and, uh, you know, you can't say over time because, I mean, listen, we've been together for 13 years. We're, we're together every day, all day, you know, pretty much. <laughs> Literally. Uh, and we're, you know, most couples, they're working jobs. Even right. in, during COVID, you know, like I know a lot of people were at home together and that caused a lot of problems. People mm. weren't used to it. And, you know, I, they were getting into those nerves and stuff like that instead of embracing it to a certain extent and, and really growing your relationship, you know. And, but some people need that time apart too, yeah. like during their work hours or whatever it is. And that makes them appreciate their partner even more when they do see him. Mm-hmm. I can understand that that side of it too as well. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's me personally, though. <laughs> She's gonna have separation anxiety. Watch out, guys. <laughs> I'll be blowing in a bag. <laughs> Where's John? He just went out to the car to go grab something. Sure, he's gonna be right back. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, that's another thing. You know, if you really want to, you know, do something really cool, like, you know, send your significant other a little present in the mail, right? And mm-hmm. watch her unbox it or give it to her, whatever yeah, it is. Cute. That's cool. I mean, like, totally unexpected. So it's not like a Mother's Day or Where it's Valentine's expected, Day. You're yeah, it's something. kind of like an expected thing. No, this is like you just doing it on like a one-off, like, right? And you could give them like one flower and a little note if you're a guy. You know, you could do a lot of these different things, you know? I mean... Women can do it a million different ways too. So at that point, you guys just gotta find like little things you could possibly do to, you know, to appreciate your partner, show the appreciation, show them they're not insignificant, right? And you know, if you used to do these things in your relationship, and you're like, man, like I don't do those anymore, you should probably start. Just you know, I'm not saying go full blast, but maybe adding that back into the relationship might bring the relationship, you know to a better point because mm-hmm. some relationships get to that little plateau area and then they start dying off or people start growing apart or they don't feel the same way about each other and stuff like that. There's reasons why. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the reason is, is because, you know, people do like, they're not, they're not spending the time together. If you used to spend a lot of time together mm-hmm. and then you go to spending no time together, that's almost like a shock to the relationship. Yeah. Right. Um, and it, let's say you start a relationship one way and For example, you guys both spent a lot of time together. You guys never went on girls, guys trips or anything Mm -hmm. like that, right? And now all of a sudden it turns into, I'm going on a guy's trip every other weekend. I need to go out with my buddies. There'd be Uh, fuss and fights about that. Then at that point, the girls are going to feel like, hey, listen, what's going on? Yeah, why? All of a sudden. That's not how it used to be, right? Now when you start a relationship and you're both like, hey, listen, you know, I, I do these certain things. You guys establish boundaries right. and it's expectations. Right, it's being set, right. It's being set. And then at that point, like, you know, you work in. You know, me and Sharice are the example for that. Like, when we first started, it was like, 
She was like, hey, listen, don't bother me. Like, don't text me all the time. Don't, don't be yeah. hounding me. And I'm like, hey, listen, don't be doing that to me either. We're good, right? <laughs> me and you are good. It was so right? weird. Like, pound so on weird. it, pound on it. <laughs> but, so weird. You know, but then it gets into the aspect of, like, you know, you really do want to spend more and more of your time with that person or learn about We ended up hanging out a lot, and I was like, oh, I really like this guy. Yeah. And then, you know, the fact that he didn't want to know where I was at, now I'm like, oh. You don't want to know where I'm at now? Well, you didn't ask. You want me to not ask you where you're going? I'm like, well, you don't care? Yeah. So, you know, it was one of those weird. It was weird. You, you can't force anything <laughs> either, right? Weird. Don't try to force anything in a relationship. You try to force somebody, it usually negates them not wanting to do it even more. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got to want to do it. It's almost like, you know, like uh, a drug addict and saying, you need to stop drugs. Well, you need to stop. You've got to stop right now. they got to want to stop drugs, right, right, to do something like that. And you know, that's just something you got to do. Like, you gotta, you got to give them the opportunity, maybe communicate the way that you want the relationship to go or things that you're missing out on. And at that point... You guys come to some resolution. Communication. About communication. Again, communication. If you don't communicate, people are not psychics. Well, Absolutely. I mean, I guess there's some people out there that are psychics, supposedly. Absolutely. But um, most people, they don't hold tarot cards in their pocket. Nope. They don't know what you're thinking half nope. the time. You know, and if you just keep playing it off like everything's cool, yep. then they're going to think everything's cool. You don't have to be mean about it. But, you know, it does make you, you got to take a second to think about how you can make your partner feel special one day. Right. You could, it could just be anything. It right. could be like, uh, it could be a compliment. It could be anything, you know, it, it just think about it for two seconds. And if you do communicate with your partner, set out those, those bonds of re resolutions. And at that point, come to an agreement on it. Yeah. Now, if they don't follow through with it, then, you know, you have to, you have to go up and say, hey, listen, why aren't you doing this? And if they don't get a good answer, you guys, might have to come to terms with other things. So that's another thing. You guys got to come to, to an agreement and follow through with the terms of that agreement. Okay? <laughs> so that's just, it's just, you know, some, some things I see out there. But that is the topic. Make sure you make your partner feel like they're number one all the time. And you know, make them a with. ham and cheese croissant <laughs> in bed. It's like, it's just, it it's real simple. Melts it's real heart. easy. Okay. It, it made my day. Everybody likes to get fed. <laughs> That's what it is. I'm always hungry. <laughs> So take that advice. I hope you guys are having a great day out there. We'll see you guys next Sunday and every Sunday on ABC. And if you guys miss it, just check out YouTube. Go to Type Medical Center. You can see all the shows there, plus our social media, Facebook, Instagram. Look up Type Medical Center. You'll find us there. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you guys next week on another Cupid's Corner.